Hello and welcome to lesson two of the physical geography of ancient Greece. Today we will be using one of our vocabulary words which is colony and a colony is a settlement under the control of a usually distant country and as you may know the United States started off as 13 separate colonies established by the British along the east coast of the United States and Mexico was once a colony of Spain known as Nueva España. So those are two examples of colonies we know that are closer to home in fairly recent history. Today we're going to be learning about some colonies that existed in ancient Greece. We've been discussing the geography of ancient Greece and in the previous lesson we looked at some of the geographic features of Greece and we looked at how those features affected farming in Greece. Uh, today we're going to begin by looking at how geography affected Greek life. So as you fill out your Cornell notes, on the left side you are going to write how did geography affect Greek life. Please take a moment to do that right now. Obviously, if you live in a mountainous area surrounded by the sea with many islands, geography is going to have a pretty big impact on your life. And that was very much the case for the Greeks. Um, travel was obviously difficult. Getting from point A to point B was definitely not a straight line. Uh, you had to be able to get across the seas and you had to be able to get across the mountains and they had to find ways to do that. Um, they were very isolated from one another because of the water and because of the mountains. The different cities of Greece were pretty far apart from each other and it was very difficult to get from one to the other. So in many cases they were very different from each other and they were very isolated from each other. So shipping obviously was very important. It was important to know how to build boats. It was important to know how to sail boats. It was important to know how to get things from one place to another on the boats. And often it was a lot easier to travel uh, by boat than it was by land. So more often than not, that's the way the Greeks chose to travel. And also because the Greeks were isolated from one another, they relied on what were called city-states to govern them. Um, if you've learned about Mesopotamia, you know that a city-state includes the city and the land basically that's fairly close to the city that the city defends. So. City-states were often a city surrounded by walls and they also included the farmland that was nearby because the farmland was needed to support the people in the city with food. And because these city-states were geographically divided by both water and mountains, Unity, meaning having them be governed by one single government, was almost impossible. Each city-state had its own government, and often the city-states came into conflict with each other. So the city-states, because of the food crisis, in many cases actually decided to create colonies. And actually you can see some of those colonies on the map up here in the upper right hand corner of your screen all of these red diamonds are colonies that were established by Greek city-states in different parts of the Mediterranean region. This would be the Mediterranean Sea here that's not in English but it's a nice map so I chose to put it in there and down below here we have a picture of a colony surrounded by walls to protect them from enemies and such forth. 
a lot of these city states grew pretty large and so they had a lot of mouths to feed and the local farmland around the city state was not able to feed their people so they went out in search of places where they could grow food and they built cities and colonies in those places and then they shipped the food back to the city-state. Colonies, there's the word, vocabulary word number three, were established in distant areas, again, like I just said, mainly for farming. They needed food, they built their colonies places where they could grow food, they then shipped that food back to the original city-state. And in many cases, these were pretty far across the sea. If Greece is here, and you got these colonies way up here, back in those days, that was considered a long distance. And down here in North Africa, they also had some Greek colonies. So those were long distances. These were not nearby colonies. These were a significant distance away from the city-states that created them. And in many cases, they were placed where they definitely knew there was good farmland and there were ports to protect the colony, uh, especially in bad weather. Uh, most of these colonies were established between 1000 and 650 BCE. That stands for Before Common Era. Uh, zero is the beginning of what we call the Common Era. So any year before zero actually goes backwards in time like a negative number on a number line. So this went from 1,000 years before the year zero to 650 years before the year zero. So this concludes lesson two of the geography of ancient Greece. Um, right now I would like you to write a summary at the bottom of your Cornell notes sheet. Um, and in that summary, you definitely want to focus on what the most important thing you've learned in this lesson. And if you can summarize that in about three to five sentences and include most of the important details you've learned about, but putting it into your own words and focusing on the most important facts. Uh, this is the most important part of the lesson because you have to take what you've learned and apply it and put it into your own words. And by putting it into your own words, showing that you know what you've learned today. Please do that now.